Hello and welcome to the first time I think I've ever talked about books on this channel. I like to read and I thought it would be fun to just go over th the, the books that I've read at this first half of the year and maybe I'll do another video for the second half of the year. I think I've mentioned this actually in a video, but last year was the year of rereading all of my favorites, Dracula and Frankenstein and uh, the Time Machine and Amityville Horror, like just these classics that I have enjoyed so much in my life and I haven't revisit that, revisited them in a very long time and it was just for some reason I wanted to revisit all of those books and I was actually kind of curious to see if my favorites would still be my favorites and yes, <laughs> I really love those books so much. The only problem with that is that I wasn't getting a chance to read anything new and there are so many books in the world and it gets very overwhelming sometimes to pick what the next read is and in the past I've been very critical of the books that I read and if I didn't like it I wouldn't continue. That actually changed this year in which actually last year too when I start a book even if I don't like it I just stick it out and read it to the end and often I have found that I am pleasantly surprised by the end and have found an unexpected funness for the story. So to start off my partner and I actually read the Miss Peregrine's trilogy for Peculiar Children. And the first book in this series I actually read when it first came out. And he and I had both read this book already um, and had always been kind of curious where the story goes and what happens in the, the other two books. So when we saw the second book in the series at a used bookstore, we were like, oh, we should read this this series together and we started all over again with the first book just to kind of like catch up. Now for those of you who don't know this is a young adult series and so keep that in mind it is definitely written for a certain age group and there are some holes I think in the story but overall it's a really wonderful story. I love the characters so much I find them all very endearing and I created by the end of the series of course I created a, a fondness of them all and I really missed them when we were done. So the author Ransom Riggs was actually inspired by this first book by these old found photos and so the first book is basically written from the photos that he found and it creates this really fascinating very unique story about these children who are actually much older than they look uh, who have peculiar powers or peculiar things. I don't know if I would call them powers. Some of the powers are more of an inconvenience, it seems, at times, but they all play a special role in the story and the development of everything that happens. And this is a really sweet story, really sweet series. If you're looking for a fantasy that's easy to read and engaging, then I definitely recommend it. The next book I read this year was Catherine the Great. This is a nonfiction. I've always been interested in Catherine the Great as a leader and a person and this time in Russia and kind of curious about it and wanting to know more. And I definitely learned more in this book, but I have to admit I have a very difficult time reading nonfiction. I tend to read nonfiction very slowly. It doesn't engage me like a fiction novel does. And so it took me months to get through this book because I would read a little right before bed and fall asleep very soon afterwards. So it was just like, huh. And by the end, I have to admit, it felt a little tedious. Like there was a certain point where I was like, you know, I don't really care about all this political drama. The thing that I really appreciated about this author's approach is that there wasn't any fluff. It was very straightforward and to the point. It felt very accurate, as accurate as it could be when you're trying to put just together a story based on letters and journal entries and he told, she said, whatever. Um, and a lot of the things that he would state would then be supported by a direct quote from either her journal or a, a correspondence between 
she and someone else. And so it didn't feel, it didn't feel sensationalized, which I really appreciated because it's a historical telling. It's a, you know, it's a telling of a historical event or life. And I would imagine that's really difficult to do because you don't get the opportunity to fill in all those, those empty spaces with made up stuff or, or fluff. This book, I Remember You, was recommended on one of my favorite podcasts, My Favorite Murder, and uh, it's a ghost story set in Iceland. So I was like, sold, it's a ghost story, and it's got a really cool setting. I've not read any books that were set in Iceland, so it's just really fun. I definitely want to get more from this author. She primarily uh, writes crime fiction, though. I think this is her only ghost story. And it was a, it was, it checked all the boxes. It's a, like a very classic ghost story. There was moments of suspense and there was moments where it got a little scary and I was like, maybe I shouldn't read this before bed because <laughs> I don't want these images in my head. It wasn't go gory. It was just a very straightforward ghost story in a very cool setting. Um, the characters were interesting, although I don't, I can't say that I was ever attached to any of them but they were interesting enough to read about. And I was definitely very engaged and very curious to know what had happened. In the end, I think I was just a tad bit disappointed because it was a very, it's a story that's been told a lot. It was a, so that was just a little bit disappointing because it wasn't like something new and revolutionary, but it was still really good. I really enjoyed it and for if you're in the mood for a ghost story, I think this is a great option. Next on the list, I think this is, for me, the book of the year, The Truth About the Harry Coubert Affair by Joel Dicker. And I really found this book extremely interesting. Uh, it's a crime fiction that is told in such a beautiful, engaging, unique way. Uh, I just, it was the kind of book that when I was finished with it, it left such a void that I just, I missed it. I missed the story. I missed being in the book. I missed learning more about the characters. It just, yeah, it really sat with me for days after I was thinking about this book. Uh, and so I just highly recommend it. I don't want to say anything more because it's, I don't want to give anything away. But if you're looking for a crime story that is told in a very, engaging and at times heart tugging way um this is definitely a good book then we have the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime this is written by through the perspective of a young autistic male uh, and i think it's a perspective that's really important to read because it's a very it's very eye-opening it's very uh it's a voice that is very misunderstood, I think, and or just not told at all. And so it's nice to hear that voice. It's nice to get a better understanding. I think the author knew uh, very well, as well as he could. And actually, I don't know anything about this author, but I think he did a great job. At the end of the book, though, I was left feeling a little like, meh, it's over. Okay, now what? Uh, and maybe that was part of the story. Maybe that's part of like, because it's it's a strange, it's a story, but not a story. It's just a writing of someone's thoughts. And so maybe that's very appropriate for the ending to just be kind of like, done? Okay. But for me as, you know, as a, the reader, I felt a little like, I kind of wish there was more to it than that, but sometimes that's just life and sometimes there isn't more to it. Um, so it was a quick read and definitely a very interesting perspective. So I'll give it that. This one, uh, if I judged a book by its cover, I probably would have looked at that and be like, mm, no, I'm not gonna read that. And honestly, it's a story that, uh, I don't know what kind of genre I would call this. It's the ghost in the house. It's about a ghost. It's actually written through the perspective of the ghost. 
someone finding out that she's a ghost for the first time and trying to process all of that and what that means and, and sort through her life as she knew it and how it's now different. Uh, and, but I just, I don't know, I'm not, whatever genre that is, I tend to not enjoy it. So I kind of went into it, well, first of all, I went into it thinking it was going to be more of a ghost story, like a scary ghost story, maybe. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be more of a an emotional journey, <laughs> a journey of self-discovery, I suppose you could say. And so I was, a, I got a little critical at a certain point, like, oh, I'm not going to like this book. And to be honest, the writing in the beginning is very disorienting, but it's perfect because the character is also extremely disoriented. So she's trying to figure it out and you're trying to figure it out. Uh, and in the end, I ended up crying very hard and feeling a lot of appreciation for the story and realizing the purpose of the story and the significance and feeling the impact of the story. So in the end, I enjoyed this book, but I was really critical of it from the get-go and it was just one that surprised me and and so I'm glad I stuck it through and and continue to read it. It's a very short book. It's a very easy read. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything more to say about it. And then we have Bruno, Chief of Police. This is a very typical standard murder mystery story. You have a detective, you have a town, usually a small town. In this case, it's a small town in France. Uh, and someone is dead. And it just is the story of figuring out who did it. And so it was nothing new. It was actually very standard. I've read, I want to say most of Agatha Christie, and so many books in that genre and in that similar vein that I find myself being less interested in them because it's the same pattern. It's the same exact story, just in a new setting with a new police officer or detective. Um, and so I, I wasn't as excited about this book as maybe I would have been in the past because it was just that. But I still enjoyed it and I still read it. And it's in a tiny little town in France, which is interesting. And uh, Bruno, the chief of police, is... I don't know, actually, if I enjoyed his character. It's funny because in the story, everyone really loved him. But I'm like, why? I don't know anything about him. Why should I love him? I feel like I was being pitched this wonderful person without any evidence to support that other than what other people thought. And it just... So it didn't... It didn't wow me. And there's a good chance that I'll read more in this series. There's a lot of books that were written after about Bruno, uh, with Bruno. I think part of the problem with, with this genre is because characters, there's so, there's such a like constant cycling through of characters because people die and people get arrested. And so it's like new characters, new town because um, people are dying off or being taken away, uh, that you don't really have a chance to get attached to anybody. And I kind of, I like delving a little deeper into a character, what makes them tick and who they are. And yeah, so anyways, it sounded really, I feel like I was really critical. Then this is the most recent one I have just finished up, In the Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. And this was another book that really surprised me. I was surprised by how much I ended up enjoying this book. It really, about halfway through, maybe three quarters of the way through, it took, it was a little bit slow in the beginning. Uh, suddenly I found myself like, I have to know what happens next. So it was a book that I would think about throughout the day and I couldn't wait till I had time again to read more of it. Um, and then I got to the very end and I started to slow down in reading it because I didn't want it to be over. So I think that's a sign of a book that I've enjoyed for sure. It was unexpected in the sense that initially I was like, I don't know if I could read about this group of people. <laughs> I have a hard time relating to them. I don't know if I can be invested or care, but in the end it just, 
I don't know, it really surprised me. And at a certain point, like I already said, I just, I found myself extremely engaged and really wanting to know. I actually already knew where it was going. I had a sense. So it wasn't that that was a surprise. Um, I think that was pretty obvious. And I don't know if the author intended it to be surprising. I think it was mostly intended to be surprising for the character, but for the reader, it's a lot more obvious because we're not invested in the relationship of the, or the, how the, yeah, the relationships this character had with the other characters in the story. So yeah, I like this book so much that I ended up actually getting another book by Ruth Ware. And we'll read this one soon, I think. I look forward to it. It just, yeah, I like the writing style a lot and I found it very engaging. And I think this quote on the cover is hilarious. I don't know why. Prepared to be scared, really scared. Reese, Reese Witherspoon. Um, I didn't find it scary at all. It wasn't, it wasn't scary in that sense, but maybe scary of when you consider the lengths, the desperation, the things that people will go to um, to maintain their perfect image, maybe. Anyways, that's all I'll say about that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.